Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna be covering decals, the basics of decals, how to make your own, and at the end, I'll be showing you how to apply it to a more complicated effect like blown sand. Let's get into it. So in Unreal Engine, I'm gonna make a new material. Right click, choose material, and what I'm gonna call this is M underscore sand decal. Hit enter, and I'm gonna double click on that material to open it. The first thing that we're gonna to have to do is to change the material type to a decal. You can find that option under material Material domain, scroll down to deferred decal here. Right away, it's gonna give you an error, and this is telling you that you need the material to be a translucent material in order to be a decal, because a decal is a material that doesn't apply to the whole object, but just in a specific targeted area. So we need a mask. So we're gonna change the material to a translucent type under blending mode here. Now we'll see the error go away, and we can start plugging some things in. So just to illustrate what we're doing here, I'm gonna first just make a color by holding down three and left clicking. I'm gonna plug that into the base color. Whenever we're building a decal, we need an alpha mask. An alpha mask is a black and white shape that's gonna be a stencil for where this decal is being applied. I have a very simple one in my textures folder here, which is just a circle. I'm gonna drag that into the material and we're gonna plug the RGB into opacity. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on my material, minimize the window, come back to the material that I made, and I can go ahead and drag it into my level here. So when I drag this into my environment, you can see it's giving me this little decal icon here and it's creating a volume. This green volume is going to be where the decal is contained within. I can scale it down here if I want. Something to keep in mind, when you move the decal, when the volume is no longer overlapping with an object, it will stop being displayed. So you can see my volume is no longer intersecting with the ground, so you can't see the decal anymore. I'm going to drag it back down. So you can see the sphere, the alpha that I chose, cutting out this material. If I didn't have this sphere, I disconnected here, it will look something like this. It will just go to the extent of the volume that is the decal. There'll be nothing telling it where the material should end. So think of this like a sticker that's going on to an object. So opening up our material again, let's make this a little more complicated. I have some textures for sand, which I'm going to drag in here. And you can find these textures very easily in Quixel Bridge. You don't know how to use Quixel Bridge to get textures and materials. Drop a comment down below and I will make a video on that. I have my sand color here, which I'm going to drag into my material and I'm going to connect it up to base color. I'm going to connect my normal map as well and finally my roughest map. Okay so now we have our sand connected. We'll connect our mask, hit save, and take a look at what we have. So this looks already pretty great. We have a sand material being cut out by the sphere. Let's use a slightly more complicated alpha mask. Remember alpha mask is just a black and white texture. Everything that is white in that texture is going to be visible. Everything that's black in that texture is going to be transparent or invisible. So if I open up my alpha masks I also have this more complicated complicated texture here that I'm going to use instead of the sphere. Again, I downloaded this from Quixel Bridge, but you can also create this in Photoshop. I'm going to open up my material, remove the sphere, drag in this new alpha, and connect to the opacity mask. Hit save. And there we have it. We have a pretty convincing looking sand decal that I can just kind of apply in my environment. So how can we take this to the next level? I personally use these type of decals in a lot of different ways. One way that I use it is when I'm creating storm effects. I use it to create the effect that sand is being blown along the ground. So you can actually add some animation to these decals, which is really cool. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to open up the material again, open up my textures, and what I'm going to be dragging in is another normal map. This second normal map, I'm going to be blending on top of my other normal map. So I'm going to right click, type in blend normals, and I'm going to choose blend angle corrected normals here. I'm going to connect this from that normal map into here, and this normal map into additional normal, and plug that into the normal map instead we hit save. We can see we've added some waves to our decal. Now let's move those waves over time. Jump back in here. I'm going to right click and create a panner node. Plug the panner into the UVs of the wave normal. I'm going to hold down one and left click to create a float and plug that into speed. This is going to tell me how fast it's being moved and I'm going to put something like 0.1 maybe. Minimize that. So the panner is moving the normal map across the surface and this is giving the effect that the wind is blowing the sand along the ground. My waves are a little too small so I'm going to jump back into the material here, create a texture coordinate node. Then I'm going to drag off of that and create a multiply. Hold one again and left click, create another float. Plug that into the coordinates of the panel. And I'll make this a value of 0.5. So what is actually happening here? Normally our texture coordinates would plug straight into the UV input of the normal map. The way it's moving the normal map is that it's moving in UV space. So that's why the panner is going to come in between the texture coordinate and the UV input of the texture because it's like 
and then I'm adding this multiply in between the texture coordinates and the panner in order to expand the UV slightly. And I'll actually maybe make this point too. So if I hit save here, we can see the waves are now a bit bigger. If I wanted to modify the strength of the waves, what I would do is add a flatten normal map node. So right click, type in flatten normal here, plug the normal map into that and the result back into the additional normal. And again, create a float by holding one and left clicking, plug that into flatness. And what this does is going to flatten the normal map texture based on the numeric value that you plug into flatness. So one is gonna be completely flat, so you won't see it anymore. And zero is gonna be exactly what I have. So if I make it something like five and we hit save you can see it's a lot more subtle here so the last step here that I need to do is I don't want to really use this material as a master material I'm going to create an instance for it so I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter for the UV coordinates by right clicking on the node and converting it to a parameter I will call it wave scale or something the speed as well I will convert to a parameter right clicking and I will call this wave speed and finally the intensity of the waves I will convert to a parameter and call it wave platen. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and come over here to my material, right click on it and create material instance from it. This is gonna let me modify the material a little bit easier in my environment. I always add an I after the M here. So it's MI for material instance and decal and I'll get rid of this one I have in my environment and drag this one in. So now I have, if I open this, the controls to modify the flatness within my environment or the scale. And there you have it. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up to let me know and as always I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about Unreal Engine as a filmmaking tool I've made a free training which you can jump into in the description below. All right see you in the next one.